Okay, I think uh, this is our third video in the book of Habakkuk, and we're in chapter one still. Uh, we've never really got started good. Uh, we got through chapter four, we got through, uh, I mean, verse four, the first chapter of Habakkuk's complaint about, Lord, I see all this evil, why are you let me sit and you're not doing anything? We've talked a little bit about why and, and about God's response, but we really haven't got into it a whole lot yet. Uh, and so let's go ahead and get started uh, so we can hopefully make some um, progress here as far as moving on through. I do want to get back to the book of Zechariah and uh, then on to Revelation, but I just felt like the need that we'd uh, cover this. Uh, it's a little known book, but it's so pertinent that we understand God's truth from this prophet. So... <clears throat> God says, I'm doing something in your day. People wonder about when Habakkuk, they're not sure when he prophesied. Well, I believe it was close to the time, just before the Babylonians came. Because he said, in your day, that you would not believe if told. For behold, I'm raising up the Chaldeans. I said before, you could say today, maybe if America, I'm raising up the Taliban. I'm raising up ISIS again. I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something about the sins in America. Now, I repeated this every video, but I repeat it again. God, why aren't you doing something about all this evil? And he may be saying, why aren't you doing, what are you doing about it? You're not willing to pay the price. You back it out. Come short of doing what you need to do to put these people down, these evil, wicked, religion, barbaric people. And that's what they are, barbarians. Now, I don't mean to paint a whole picture just because of that nationality or whatever, but it's a wicked, barbaric religion. And oh, it makes me sick when I think back to 9-11 and you hear those statements, oh, it's just a few young radicals that hijacked a, a good, wonderful religion, hogwash. And that's the reason we're in the condition we're in today and the facing the things we're facing today because we don't realize haven't realized what we're dealing with from hold I'm raising up the Chaldeans that bitter and hasty nation who marched through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own they are dreaded and fearsome their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. The horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swift to devour. They all come for violence. All their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings, they scoff. At rulers, they laugh. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up earth and take it. Then they sweep by like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own might is their God. There's God's response. That is God's response to Habakkuk about all the evil. I'm going to do something about it. You, evidently nobody in Judah was doing anything about it. God said, I'll do something. America's many Christians. Oh, stand up and preach against all this evil. I've mentioned that before. I'll say it again. We preach against all this evil. Uh, the, the 
the LGBTQ lifestyle that's anti-God, the abortions, the murders. Oh, it's my body. I'll do as I please. No, no, it's God's. God created you. No matter whether you believe it or not. And so we go to the polls. We preach against him, talk against how bad these things are. But then we go to the polls and we vote for the people that promote these very things. God knows that, I don't know what, <laughs> and you know, I don't want to get too political because I both these parties I've said before, but they'll both let you down, both of the major parties, Republicans and Democrats. Eventually they'll both let you down, but one is promoting these things way more than the other is. And it's none of my business, and I don't know how you went to the poll. We used to talk about pulling the lever because that's the way the voting machines were. We don't know who you penciled in or whatever on your record, or I have no clue, but God knows. God knows what and who you voted for just because there was something about them you liked. Or you thought you was going to get something special. You're thinking, that's it. You're thinking about yourself instead of the good of the country. And so the evil goes on. The abortions continue. Because we vote for these same people. The same party. We we vote to allow this lifestyle just to go on. You got men competing as women in, in women's sports. Talk about being unfair. Yes, it is. It's silly. Person now claimed to have no gender. Well, God said there's two, male and female. No such thing as somebody not having a gender. I know there's physical anomalies that happen, but you've got the uh, chromosome. You can't change that. God is getting ready to do something. America, God is getting ready to do something. I'm speaking to America first. I think the world is going to see. And that's what the Babylonians did. And that's what God was saying here. Look among the nations. I'm already doing the work. They're marching through, taking this country and this country now. And they'll be here. They'll take Jerusalem. They'll take Judah. Yeah, they'll take care of these, the sin that Judah is committing. You may say, well, I can't believe that's, but they're worse. And that's what Habakkuk basically said later. They're worse than we are, God. Why? How can you let them come in and, and bring judgment on us? Well, if you don't like that option, my suggestion is that you start repenting. If you don't like the possibility of the Taliban, I mean, you, you, do you understand that our, we don't know what's coming in at our southern border? I mean, I think we do know, but we don't know for sure the number, who they are, what they are. Well, we just opened up the gates. Taliban. Cults. And that's what's also been uncovered is that many of them are of the cults. A lot of these children. People talk about the children. Oh, we've got to take care of these precious children. We've got to let them come in. We can't turn them away. We can't send them back. We can't do this. Well, I, you know, we have to take them in and uh, 
criticize if we try to control the situation somewhat. There's a recent interview with uh, one of the drug lords, one of the cult leaders down in Mexico. What are all these? What are all these kids? What? Well, they're our future. They said. Their future in, in child pornography. Things like that. Even some will be used, they said, as sacrifice, human sacrifice. What you call these snuff videos where a murder is committed. And people come. Celebrities have supposedly participated, not maybe not physically participated, but been present, some of those things. I want to tell you, sin is never satisfied. You, you start out with this little sin. It's just like a drug. You start out with this little bit of drugs, well, after a while, that don't satisfy you anymore. It's, it's not enough. You need a little more. And then you get used to that. It, it just don't have the same effect, so you need a little more. And then you need something stronger. And it goes on. And there's no end to it. Sin is the same way. Oh, this little bit. Hey, what's the harm? Okay, I, you know. And then pretty soon that doesn't satisfy. You, a little more. And you look for a little more. It takes a little more to excite you. And a little more to, for whatever you're after. And soon you're consumed with sin. Someone said that sin will take you further than you ever meant to go. It'll keep you longer than you ever meant to stay. And it'll cost you more than you ever meant to pay. And I've been there. And a lot of people have. And that is absolutely true. Thank God I'm past that. I'm, <laughs> I've progressed. God has brought me through. But the cost was heavy. It was a great cost. I... Thought I'd go out and have a good time at a certain point in my life. <clears throat> After some bitter disappointments happened in my life, I, okay, I've been a good kid. You see what I've been missing. Well, I wish I'd still missed it. But God, it cost me. Yes, it did. Much more than I'd ever wanted to pay. But God has brought me this far. And he'll take me all the way. But in the meantime, in the interval, there is a price to pay for sin. In America, we, we just... gone to that started you know just a little bit and now yeah it's taken more and it's 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 grown and these celebrities i mean they have no most of them i'm not putting them all there there's good celebrities christians not many but hey they've got all this wealth they can 
get what they want, do what they want. And they've given themselves over to sin. And then they won't tell us how to live. Oh, how ridiculous. But they, you know, yeah, some of them participated or, or like I say, attended some of these cult stuff. That's what's coming. And like I say, the cults, who knows how many Taliban coming through or people be converted. But let me say this, and I'm gonna, this one will be a little shorter for a change. Been running about 30 minutes. Unless God intervenes with it. But that brings up another question. Another thing. I think the border should have been closed. I, it's, it's foolish to let just anybody come in. We, what we've done, and that's another, basically, that's another great sin that we've committed. Let me just put it to you this way. Yes, keeping the border open like it is, is a sin. Why? You say, well, we're letting all these people come. These people are fleeing oppression. No. No. You're letting those people come in, but you're letting the oppressors come in right behind them. Right along with them. So what good have you done? You've simply changed, you're changing our demographic to the same thing that they've come out of. So where, the, where then are they going to flee to? God help us. America needs to repent. You need to repent. If you can't see that. Now, I've said a long time, a lot of these <clears throat> people we let come in from the Middle East, and I'm not saying we shouldn't let anybody in from there and these other places. But many times, those fleeing violence in those places turn out to be one terrorist group fleeing another terrorist group because that other terrorist group has the upper hand now. So, But if the tables were turned, these would be the terrorists. And so we've let in a bunch of terrorists into this country because they're endangered by this group of terrorists. You know and understand, you need to, you need to understand that Islam is divided religion. And they will kill one another just as quickly as they will kill Christians and non-Muslims. And so we took a lot of those in. Uh, so they're here now. But they're still terrorists. I think we've got a couple of them that's in Congress. They're there to tear down what we have. I'm telling you what may be coming. I, I'm not, I said before, I'm not a prophet. I don't pretend to be a prophet. I don't call myself a prophet. I do deal with some prophecy, but it comes from this book. Know what God has done in the past, how God is. I mean, this reveals the very nature of God. I mean, some of it's his nature. He cannot change. He says that what well, Jesus Christ says, you know, about him, it says about Jesus Christ in Hebrews, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Unchanging. So if you know what God is like, and you read in here and find out what God is like. Then you know what he's like today. What, you know. Now, in every instance, he does things differently in certain circumstances, just like going out to battle. 
He told the children of Israel. A lot of times he'd tell them, you know, prepare for battle. He'd send Gideon out. Of course, he told them, dwindle his army down. You got too many, you know. Because God said, I'm going to show you that, you know, I'm God. You only need 300 people. But then other times God said, no, you know, don't even go out and fight them. Just start praising me. Sing praises to God. Get the choir ready. And, and God gave victory. So there may be different ways he does things, uh, but his nature does not change. I am God, I change not. So we need to learn. Now I'm not, like I say, I can't say with 100% certainty, but I'm telling you, I think we're looking I know we're looking for God's judgment. I just don't know exactly how it's coming. But you better look at what we have allowed to build up and even armed them in Afghanistan and what we're allowing to come through our border may be just like the Babylonians wiping out everything in their path. Wicked. Wicked people. No mercy. Very little mercy. So America, I, I'm, I make this offer, and I feel like this is of God. Let me make this one more time. Will you repent now? Or do you want the next wave? Look at the next year, the past year and a half or so. One thing after another. Go back and look at my videos. So far, every one of them has proven true. And like I say, I, that don't make me a prophet. I just, like I say, I. You know, I know God's, I've learned God's nature. I see what's happened before. I see how God works. Have you had enough yet, or you want the next wave? That's a choice you've got to make. That's the choice America has right now. That's the choice you have as an individual. Have you had enough? Oh, you're not going to do anything to stop it. Not yourself. You say, well, wait till the next election. Unless God steps in, that's not going to help you. Unless God steps in, nothing is going to change. You're not going to change anything. You think you can get enough people behind you. You think you can get you a following. You think, you know, you can create enough uproar, you can do this and that. Well, you can make a difference in some ways. I'm not saying that can't happen, but you're not going to stop the hand of God. You're not going to stop the judgment that God said is coming. So you need to make up your mind. Have you had enough? Are you ready to repent before God? And say, Lord, I haven't taken this very seriously. I haven't taken you very seriously. I've been caught up into these games. I've been caught up into the politics too deep, the, the whatever aspect, the natural. I've been fighting this battle with Basically, it's flesh and blood instead of fighting it as spiritual warfare. The Bible says that 
We're not fighting against those things. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And that's the only way you're going to have victory is fight it as a spiritual battle. I mean, like I say, there's time, there's a place for things. So the choice is yours. You satisfied the way things are or are you ready to repent? Are you ready for the next wave? And what is the next wave going to be? I, I don't know for sure, but I'm just, I'm telling you. Very possibility, strong possibility of what's going to happen based on God's word. God's judgment is not done yet because we've not repented to the point that he's looking for us to. We try to repent just enough Oh, well, can I get by here? Will that, will that be enough? Uh, Lord, it's hard to have to get down in here and really see what's deep down and get rid of the everything. Can I not hold on to this a little bit? Can I not continue to hear? Can I do this? Lord, I don't want to dig too deep. It, it, it hurts to get into some of this sin that I've got hidden down there, the thoughts and the all this stuff. Yeah, it, it's difficult. We just got through verse 11. And we'll pick up verse 12 next time. They're a little rescue American ministers. I am happen to be here in Chesnadia, Romania right now. Uh, serving as a missionary, but this message is I've been preaching. Yeah, it's good for every nation. It's good for the world. But I'm talking primarily to America. <laughs>